So over a year ago, I was uh, going through my um, late father's old um, things and uh, found that he had painstakingly pulled out, desoldered um, a whole bunch of different transistors from various circuit boards. And uh, I decided to see if I could um, make use of them. It would be a shame for them to go to waste. And made this thing which didn't work out too well because I think I have used the wrong component values. I was basically limiting myself to whatever was in this box here. Only the components that my dad had recovered. And um, it was meant to be a ring oscillator, but it doesn't really ring oscillate. So I want to see if I can uh, do better than the last time and have a circuit that actually does something uh, non-trivial and works a bit better than this. Um, again, I would want to limit myself mainly to the components that my dad had recovered. Uh, so only these transistors, uh, capacitors, uh, these resistors. Uh, that, that there's not a lot of variety here. Um, it's not just these resistors that I found in my dad's junk bin, but uh, all of these. I've started using some of these already. And um, let's see what I can make under these limitations. So here's what I've come up with. It's a light sensitive motor controller. Now the motors that I'm using here is, seems to be a DC motor pulled out of a VCR or tape deck or cassette drive or something of some sort. My dad also recovered lots of these DC motors and stepper motors from printers as well, so I have a collection of these to use. The LEDs are also from a long time ago, and that's why they're so dim. I'm using three of them as a light sensor by reverse biasing, so they act like a photodiode. And uh, I haven't been able to use all the resistors. I'm using new resistors in, in many places because having been pulled out of a circuit board, the legs are very short and encrusted with solder, so they're not really suitable for breadboard use. But when I finally sold up the, f the final version, and uh, I intend to replace these as much as possible with uh, like values from the recovered set. It wasn't too clear that the light sensing was actually changing the direction of rotation of that DC motor. So I've uh, glued two jaw lids together and using a rubber band as the belt drive to make this clear. I've started soldering up some of the components together. So these three old LEDs are not very bright since they date back to the 70s, but if you reverse bias them and then amplify them using a triple Darlington configuration of NPN transistors, also paralleling up the uh, LEDs, they do work as a light sensor. So just, ap just applying uh, 5 to 6 volts and measuring the voltage, you can see that these LEDs do function as a light sensor. They're not very sensitive even with the triple Darlington um, boosting of the voltage. But um, multi multimeter is picking up a uh, swing in the voltage that if you use sufficiently bright light can be used uh, as a logic level uh, signal. I've soldered up a comparator using two PNP uh, transistors in a long-tailed pair configuration. Uh, the, the current source I'm using for the long tail is just a resistor. Um, also using two NPN transistors as a current mirror to sync the current. And this uh, allows the comparator to, ju to just have one output. Uh, the design for this I, I got from a YouTube video, um, A2 AEW, I believe is his handle, and uh, I'll link to his video. In testing the comparator, 
um, I've hooked up the this old potentiometer. My dad, uh, he also built his own equalizer back in the day. I had a whole bank of these. I guess this is one of the leftovers. So this linear potentiometer, the output is uh, being shown on a Unity multimeter being input to one, part, uh, one input of the comparator. The other input to the comparator is a coin cell and the yellow multimeter shows the output. So as I increase the voltage on the potentiometer, when it exceeds that of the coin cell, um, the output drops to zero. And as I lower it back, the output goes back high again. This is uh, the Schmidt trigger made from two NPN transistors and a whole bunch of resistors. The resistor values I got from another YouTube video that shows how to make a logic level Schmidt trigger from two NPN transistors. Um, now I'm using the junk bin recovered resistor so that more or less dictated how I soldered this together. I wanted to see what shape would come out if I just tried to solder everything together with as minimum amount of added wire. In testing the Schmidt trigger again the Unity uh, multimeter is showing the input to the Schmidt trigger which is controlled by the potentiometer and the yellow multimeter shows the output. So as I increase the input past 2 volts, somewhere between 2 volts and 2.1, the output goes high. But only when I lower to below 1.7 volts does the input drop back low again. Now it doesn't drop all the way back to zero. Um, so to use, but it can still be used as a logic level. However, if I'm, if I'm using transistor logic, I think this will be output to the base of a PNP transistor in order to control the um, the, mo the the motor bridge, H bridge. This is the A stable multi vibrator made from two NPN transistors, a couple of capacitors, and some resistors. The LEDs are these decade-old um, indicator LEDs, so they're quite dim, but I put them in just to sh indicate that the oscillator is working. I'll be using this for pulse width modulation. I've dimmed the lights in order to allow the, these 70s era LEDs to show up. As, a, as you know, they're not very bright back then. Um, so this um, does have a very fast um, duty cycle, um, sorry, oscillation rate. And I think I have the duty cycle set to just below 50%, so hopefully that will be sufficient uh, pulse width modulation in order to control, to have the motors not spin too quickly. This is the H bridge, it's made from four NPN transistors and two PNP transistors. Uh, you can see the. Uh, it also includes the flyback diodes to prevent any um, back EMF um, from feeding back into the rest of the circuit. I've also had to put resistors in series and also put resistors in parallel in order to make sure that they're. I I've, I've get the um, desired resistor values. So you can see here I've paralleled up these uh, resistors in order to get around 2.2 uh, kilo ohms. So the controlling transistors I'm holding right now, uh, these switch on the opposing, diagonally opposing pairs of um, PNP and NPN transistors that allow the direction of the DC motor to be uh, controlled. I'm testing the H-bridge with the DC motor. Belt driving uh, two jarlets. The green crocodile clip is uh, set to voltage high. 
at um, between 5 to 6 volts and just touching the control ends which are the bases of those two transistors uh, I can get the motor to spin in either direction oh, here's the circuit fully assembled I still be able to recognize among this mess um, those five circuit components well this certainly should be easy to recognize since it's separate still the uh, light sensor three LEDs in reverse bias with a triple Darlington configuration of NPN transistors to amplify the voltage um, I added this resistor capacitor uh, in order to filter the output otherwise um, this would just be vibrating all over the place and this feeds into the comparator which is two uh, PNP transistors a long tail pair with a 3k resistor and these two NPN transistors form a current mirror sinking the current to the ground so we have a ground wire going along here and the um, voltage supply wire going along here now the comparator outputs to the Sch Schmidt trigger implemented with two NPN transistors the Schmidt trigger then via these two control wires um, control the direction of the H bridge so you can just about barely recognize the H bridge here the H bridge is I've connected via these two wires here to the DC motor which is spinning these two jar lids via a rubber band I felt I needed a an electromechanical component to this design because um, yeah, a lot of the hacks that my dad would do uh, tended to be more of the electromechanical form uh, for instance I remember one Christmas he had the Christmas tree lights uh, were triggered using uh, um, essentially an induction motor powering a cam uh, which switched on a limit switch on and off and that's how we, he, he created his own timer um, so this would be sort of reminiscent of that so the H bridge here uh, the gates of the controlling transistors that control the, the direction uh, the bases the bases are connected here and here so we have an NPN transistor that ensures that when one base is being driven with current the other one is pulled low so we don't want both of them turned on at the same time if that happens then they'd be near dead short between ground and voltage high which would be a bad thing um, now where does this a stable multi vibrator fit in well the, and you can barely recognize that this is where I've placed the multi vibrator uh, this is for the PWM pulse width mo uh, modulation and I have achieved that using these two diodes so whenever the multi vibrator goes into one state it pulls this this transistor switches on and pulls all pulls the bases of the two transistors controlling the direction down to ground and hence shutting off completely any current flowing through the H bridge so to, to see how that works uh, what I do is if I short this upper capacitor it will lock it into one state and sh and everything will stop moving now if I didn't do any pulse width modulation at all well that would be the equivalent of shorting out the other uh, capacitor and you should see uh, it'll just spin at full speed now it's all, it is light reactive so I've just added this piece of paper here to block out the light to get a 
more interesting motion from the motor, otherwise it'd just spin in one direction all the time until I place my shadow. Um, so I've got light coming from both sides, so the LEDs will be picking up light reflected off the paper from one side and being and also detecting the shadow cast by the sheet of paper for the light coming on the other side. Everything is powered from 6 volts, these are just 4 alkaline AA batteries. Uh, I could, could possibly power this off of a um, power supply plugged into the mains. Power brick. Also I had to add this capacitor here to stabilize the voltage. Um, otherwise um, I, this would have been just spinning erratically. Uh, there was just way too much noise coming from the DC motor for it to operate. So managed to get this sort of behavior, non-trivial behavior, without using any microcontrollers at all, no ICs or anything. Uh, of course the price I pay is um, I got one really ugly circuit here. It's probably, it's probably going to be one of the ugliest circuit sculptures that you've ever seen. Um, but it was a good learning experience. I can, I can actually see, see how to create comparators, Schmidt triggers, um, A-stable multivibrators and H-bridges and see how they all can be made to work together. Or oh, as, as well as uh, unobvious use of LEDs as a light sensor. And on another note, in order to adjust this behavior to different light levels, there's also uh, a potentiometer down here, um, which was also uh, recovered from uh, my dad's collection of, of junk. And that's what is feeding onto the other side of the comparator here. And so by adjusting this to the required light level, here, we can get it to behave differently. So the end result, I think it came out better than last time. The, um, the ring oscillator decoration that didn't ring oscillate. And um, also this time I managed to ensure all the electronics only, only come from the dad's uh, junk bin. Uh, whereas the ring oscillator decoration was a mixture of old and new parts. It used uh, pound wheel LED LEDs. Uh, I think the only, only new bits are the non-electronic bits, like the jar lids, the wooden frame, and um, oh, the um, solid core wires, in keeping with the tradition of Dad recovering and recycling old electronics. Uh, all of this wires picked up off the ground outside the um, junction boxes because our BT engineers they don't tidy up after themselves when they're fixing people's broadband and leave a lot of this wire just discarded all over the place. So the final result looks a bit like uh, junkyard art in which the restrictions I imposed on myself basically dictated the overall design.